Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's just me, and it's a bit of a bumper one today. I, I think I mentioned at the end that I might have had a lot of coffee on the day this was recorded. Didn't realise that at the time, but whew, I got I got in the weeds. Some of it I'm not even sure makes a lot of sense, but it's there, so you know, check it out. Talking about books, um, TV, games, that's in there, films, that's in there, um, yeah, stuff from the week, you know how it goes by now. Um, before we start, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment, uh, I know it's maybe a weird one, but if you, if you know somebody who's in the market for a podcast, send this podcast to them, they might thank you for it, they might disown you. We can only we can only find out by sending them the podcast. Anyway, let's get started. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the darkest timeline podcast. Hello. How you doing? You well? I'm going to have to start at this point because I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. But sometimes you just have to say, flip it. Um, Yes, lots of things in the way. Um, Bit of a weird one this week. A few few bits and pieces to go through. Um... I feel like I want to say I've got a confession to make. It's not a confession, it's just a weird observation. Um, recently, and I don't know why, it could be my age, um, but recently um, I've realised that I've started talking to myself more. And I remember it always a bit like... I remember being a child and it always being that thing of, oh, if you talk to yourself, it's a sign of insanity. And the run, that, that joke was, if you, if you talk to yourself, it's a sign of insanity. It's like, no, it's not a sign of insanity. The sign of insanity is if you answer yourself. Um, I've always done it. For as long as I can remember, I've always done it. I can't... I can't explain it. it. It used to be, there used to be like this clear correlation of things. Um, if I ever spent extended periods of time on my own, um, you could start a, like a stopwatch and just see how long it would take for me to start talking to myself. Um and there's been points in time where it's like minutes, certainly more recently. Um, but something I realized recently is um, I started talking to myself a lot, like outside of the house. Now, this is where things get real sketchy because you look like a crazy person. Um, and, and depending how you're going about it and how you're doing it, you, you look more or less crazy. Um, which, a good hack for this is um, owning a dog. Um, I always had this theory that if you were out and about and you were walking a dog and you were talking, nobody cared. Because you were talking to the dog. And that was like a like a freebie, like a get out of jail free. Um, and I do, I do. I when when I'm out, I talk to the dog. When I've you know, when I've looked after people's dogs previously, I was like, I was always like, oh, cool. I can I can talk to the dog when I'm out and about. Um, so. As a lot of the time that I'm out of the house is due to dog walking, it's perfectly acceptable that I talk to the dog. 
I think. Um, and I talked, <laughs> I talked to the dog about all the random things that I would talk to myself about if the dog wasn't there, if that makes sense. Um, you know, like bad parking. I'll be walking along and I'll say to the dog, look at this. Look at this. What kind of parking is this? I had to walk out onto the road the other day because there was a boat parked on the pavement. That is exactly what I mean it to sound like. There was a boat blocking the pavement. Um, I have started to wonder why. Why it is. I remember, and I think I spoke about this on a podcast, I remember when masks were, like, mandatory and, like, a big thing and all of that, I loved a mask because I could chunter and nobody could tell I was doing it. And if I'm driving, I, you know, I comment on everybody's driving and why is this person... I went somewhere today... And the person in front of me was, no matter what the speed was, they were driving 10 miles an hour below the speed limit. And as I'm sure you can imagine, I had absolutely nothing to say about that. But the other day, I'm out and about, and I'm, and I'm, I'm chuntering. No, I wasn't chuntering, I was just talking. But then I had this realisation of, uh been doing that a lot recently and like i say i've always done it but i think one of those things that if you're in your house in your own home there's nobody else there and you're talking to yourself i think that's probably okay i think we'll allow it i think that's fine i think what's become the issue is the fact that it's i've taken it out of the house No, I don't feel crazy if, if if you're wondering. I don't. So, what's that all about? I've been trying to analyse it, and I've I've come up with nothing. I've literally just realised that I'm talk. I'm I'm essentially talking to myself right now. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's like a like an ongoing podcast. Maybe I should record it. I was thinking earlier today about the fact that I own a um, a digital recorder um, that I think I used twice. Maybe I think I used it twice. Served its purpose, did the job it was needed for, but. That that was kind of I was kind of that. In fact, I'm looking at the box right now. Um, I've got a long drive coming up, so in theory, I should take the digital recorder, set it off when I set off, and see what uh, what comes of that. That's not actually that bad an idea. Could analyze it. I'm reading a book. Now, for some people, that might be surprising. For other people, you might have heard me talk about books previously. Um, every now and then I do like to talk about uh, about the odd book here and there. Um, it's... I mean, I've spoken about this before. It's an unusual thing for me to be talking about books. Uh, I was never a big reader. Um, in the last three years, I've read more books than I've read in my entire life. So that might give you some idea. At the age of 42. Um... 
I have toyed with the idea of doing the, you know, the Kindle un Unlimited thing, but because I'm not very smart and because it takes me a long time to read, I realised that I'd have to read, I think it was like two books a month and I couldn't quite guarantee that I'd be able to do that, so I've never, I've never done it. Um, and there are times that I regret it when I end up, like the other day when I bought three books, I was a bit like... Yeah. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the fact that I'm talking about a book. Wait a minute. That's what I was talking about. Anyway, why am I talking about this? Why am I rabbiting on about a book? It's a particular book. It's a book I've been after for a little while. Uh, I couldn't stomach paying the asking price. Um... Four pounds is the sweet spot. Uh, three pounds, awesome. Every now and then you get a Kindle book for a pound. Um, but four pounds is about right. Um, you've got no physical copy. And you've not got anything to hold. Um, but in a in a Kindle world, um, I you know every now and then I buy um, films digitally. And that served me quite well, save space, etc., etc. Um, but I don't want to be paying more. I saw something today. It was like you can buy this digitally for fourteen pounds. And then when I looked on the internet, I could have bought it physically for fifteen pounds. I was like, you, you're having an absolute giraffe there, my friend. Um. So anyway, books, the book. Um, the reason I want to talk about this book is because of, um, it's one of the few books that I get so far through the evening towards the back end and I do, and this is my thought process. Uh, I should probably start thinking about going to bed. Uh, it means I've got to let the dog out. Uh, it means I've got to stop playing this computer game. Oh man. I could just stay up, though. I could stay up a little bit later. Ooh, be a bit naughty, you know. And then it happens. And then go, ooh. However, if I go to bed now, I can read that book. It's like a treat. Now, for a, dys for a dyslexic man that struggles to read and has a, a the reading age of a child... You might understand that being excited about reading a book, probably not necessarily in my wheelhouse. Uh, now then, I should... How can I... Oh, I can go into here. Sometimes I enjoy sitting at the computer, and others I feel it's a distraction. Anyway, um, the name of the book is Can't Hurt Me. Master Your Mind and Defy the Odds. And the author of the book is David Goggins. Now, some of you might say, Oh, David Goggins. Some of you might say, Who? Uh, that's me typing. Du -du 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 -du. What the hell is that? Uh, so, uh, I want I want the little blurby bit. I'll just make sure it's still recording. It is still recording. Cool. Um, about David Goggins is an American ultra marathon runner, ultra distance cyclist, triathlete, public speaker, and author. He's a retired United States Navy SEAL and former United States Air Force Tactical Air Control Party member who served in the Iraq War. His memoir, Can't Hurt Me, was released in 2019. What, what few people would know about me, personally, is... Um, I, I can get a little obsessed. Um, that might come across as an understatement to some people. But I can get a little bit obsessed with stuff. 
what that looks like is if I find something that I find interesting um, and it has to hit a certain level, something where I'm like, oh, this interests me. This interests me a lot. Like I say, it's got to be up there. But if it if it is in that category, I will do absolutely everything I can to absorb as much information as possible about that subject. Um, now, with a lot of these sort of these sorts of people um, that I become sort of interested in learning about stuff like this, um, I can never tell. I can never tell people where where mm. I was or what I was doing or how I came about the, discovering the, the, this person or whatever. Um, what I can say is, X amount of time ago possibly to do with the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, there was a particular point in time where this person, David Goggins, appeared um, on my radar. And it was like, basically all that stuff I read, uh, who he is and what he, what he does, is basically what it is. Um, I'd heard... I was aware of things like these ultra marathons, um, and and it's where people just like they run for like days, um, and it's like whereas a marathon, twenty six point two miles, ultra marathons are like hundreds of miles, um, and then you start you start hearing more. World record holder. Four, the most number of pull-ups ever done. Um, and I think the record was like 4,000 and something. 22, I think it was. Um, so, anyway. I, I can start relaying all of this information, but I'm sure at this point in time, if you're even remotely interested in who David Goggins is, you can go and look it up for yourself. Why am I talking to you about it? Well, I got obsessed with this book because I got obsessed with listening to this guy talk, um, like reading stuff that I could, and, I, and it all sort of zeroed in on this book. The book held all the answers. The book had the knowledge that I, that I wanted to know. So I started reading this book. I paid the money. It was so yeah. It was seven pounds on the Kindle. It's a little rich for my blood. But as luck, in some ways, would have it. Luck would have it. Maybe I don't know. Um, there was this Kindle offer which forced my hand to buy um, to to pay the the money for the book and another book that I was after. Um, and to save money further down the line. Long story, not not necessarily um, relevant. So I bought the book. And I've been obsessed with it, as I like to be, ever since. I read it every night. I just like absorbing this information. Talks about um, him joining the Navy SEALs. And I think whenever the, the stuff with the Navy SEALs comes up, it always boils down to Hell Week. Now, from what I'm aware, Hell Week is supposedly the toughest endurance type thing ever. Like, of all the military across the world, supposedly Hell Week is, is the toughest. Uh, and it's described in the book as 130 hours, no sleep, constant... Um, like exercise stuff, press ups, um, sitting in the ocean, lifting logs, carrying boats, um, flutter kicks, pull ups, all of this sort of stuff, whilst being constantly berated by the uh, uh, like instructors. Um, like like I said, no sleep, but um, they do get fed. Um, and like I say, I can just go on and on and on about um, 
the the various stuff that I've read in this book. Um, some of the stuff that in the book that I found um, interesting that I found difficult is um, David Goggins had a difficult childhood and difficult upbringing, um, a lot of a lot of violence and other sorts of things. Um, which led to various issues school wise and stuff like that. Um, things like that obviously um, resonate for me. Um, I found it interesting that there's um, a connection with like um, the fight or flight response and learning difficulties, especially things like dyslexia. Um, found that one very interesting. Um, anyway, I'm getting I'm getting completely off track. Hell week. Anybody else hear about things like Hell Week and immediately go? Wonder how far I'd get. I would say the, the these things are designed to like claim people. Like hundreds, there's like 150 men start day one, and by the end of it, there's like 30. So it's like 120 people have said, That's enough for me. Because you can tap out at any time. But as the book says, you just have to agree to quit. Is it just me? Am I the only person that goes, I wonder how far I'd get? Bear in mind that is like a huge principle of the book. It's a huge point, the reason for the for the book and for these bits in the book. The question that's it's sort of like his driving force. His driving force is how far can I get? But when I'm reading about this sort of stuff, I'm always like, could I do that? There's a lot of mention of cold. Um, and I, I deal with cold differently um, to some of the people. I'm not going to say everybody, but some of the people. Um I don't like to be too warm, and being a, a a larger gentleman, I am often too warm. Um, so summer is one of those things that it's like, oh man, this is this is great. I always say that I like to take the opportunity to be cold, especially in summer. If for some weird reason you're like, oh, it's cold, it's kind of a thing of like you've got to cherish that. You gotta cherish that moment of being cold when it's when it's hot. Um, but on the flip side, when I eventually do get cold, it's like my hands go and they're like freezing cold. I can't really feel too much, and I've re you know recently been looking at wrist warmers in the hope that I can get through the winter, especially a winter where we're definitely not putting the heating on. Um, it's like you would probably reach that level of cold quite quickly. So is that the point where I would be like, oh, I'm tapping out now. I've been here 10 minutes and I'm, I'm done. Obviously there's the physicality of it doing like, Hundreds of press ups and stuff like that. At which point would you say, I can't do another press up? There's all sorts. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, obviously, with like Navy SEAL training, it doesn't end at Hell Week. You've actually got to go and do the training. Hell Week is there just to weed out the, for want of a better way of putting it, the week. Why am I actually talking about this? Uh, it's a good question. But. Um, I've started implementing stuff from the book into my life and have been for a while, uh, which is which is why I'm glad to be reading the book 
because I, I was probably going off half cocked. Whereas now I've got the I've got the book to back it up. Um, the book wants to challenge you and it gives you challenges it says challenge number one is this challenge number two is this between essentially between chapters you get these challenges one of the challenges recently uh or that i recently read about was uh, looking at aspects of your life where you're not overly fulfilling them to the max now for me it's always going to be a physical exercise type thing um so i went straight to my running um my out, out of the physical exercise i do my running is always going to be the weakest um i consider there to be different phases of my running career my running career which has spanned all of about it's probably about nine years um on and off and um there was a point where I was probably at um, at my peak running wise, but then stuff came up, stuff that came up like weird, like when I did a park run after seven years of not doing them and got a personal best, like that kind of thing's weird because I don't consider I'm as good as I was then because I did a 10k faster back in those days than I than I could do one now. Um, so at this point in time, I consider my running is functional, but it's not good. And if if I'm honest, holding my hands up, it's probably not actually doing the job it's intended to do because I'm probably not putting in enough. I'm probably not doing enough. I'm probably not doing it right. So when the book says when the 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 challenge in the book is to look at aspects of your life where you're not giving a hundred percent or even less than that or you're not going all out to achieve something then that's what you should do you should look at it and you should should put in the extra effort so i read this in the book i go out for my run and i knew that there was two areas in my in my daily run where i was like i i am actually phoning it in no surprises they're both hills uh one is right at the start right at the start there's a there's a hill and it's not a hill it's a it's a slight incline but i was i was slowing down going up it the other is a hill and it's a steep ish hill uh, it's a hill that I used to do um, hill sprints on, if that, that gives you any indication. Um, and again, I knew and have known all along that I've been phoning it in. So, the day that I went out and I was like, these are the areas that I need to focus on. These are the areas that I need to improve on. Um, so, I actually went and I actually ran it ran up the ran up the hill and then today ran up the first one ran up the second one dug deep i was cream crackered when i got to the top of that hill but i did it um i do spend uh, a lot more time running on a treadmill these days um and what i find with the treadmill is you you can you can press a button and run at a six or you can press a button and run at a seven obviously a six is more comfortable seven's not as comfortable nine even less comfortable 12 12 crazy numbers um but you have to physically press the button so you could stay at six Would it not be better to stay? Would it would it not be better to say, I'm not going to do six, I'm going to do seven today. Uh, today when I was on the treadmill, um, my treadmill workout is half an hour. The uh, It gives you all the 
various numbers, how far you've gone, how long you've gone, obviously half an hour, um, and things like calories. And I was struggling to break a certain number of calories. Um, it's It was 200, which 200 doesn't sound a lot. And for a lot of people, probably isn't a lot. For me, 200 calories in half an hour. Treadmill calories are weird. Let's just put it that way. Um, and I wasn't breaking it. I was getting like 191 in half an hour. Today, today I was going to get it. And I did. I achieved it. I, I, I blew it out of the water. I got over 200 calories in half an hour. I find it interesting. Oh, I went out for, I went out for a run this morning and absolutely smoked it. Um, I came like flying through the front door and I was shouting through. I was shouting through Italy and I was like, I went full Goggins. She's like, you must have done because you've, you've only been gone 25 minutes. Um, things like that. Things like that. It's like, yeah. Why did I go through all that? I don't know. I'm just telling you something that I've re- recently found interesting. Something that um, is helping to make improvements. Uh so there you go. Here's a funny story. By funny story, I expect by now you know I don't mean it's a funny story. Are we are we, are we all on the same page? Cool. My youngest daughter goes swimming. My youngest daughter goes to swimming lessons. And uh, since my son was born, um, Leanne used to take my youngest daughter swimming for, to her swimming lessons since my son was born uh, she's not been able to do that and because I'm not working um, I am on paternity leave um, it has then become my job to take my youngest daughter to her swimming lessons now I have mixed feelings, which I'm sure comes as a surprise to absolutely nobody. I have mixed feelings. My daughter's swimming teacher. Shortest version is, I don't feel that she pushes the children enough. Um, let's face it, people, we're, we're, here, we're here to learn to swim. And there are aspects of this of the swimming lesson that I don't feel um, is doing that. It's not the same every week. It's different every week, which is nice. But there are areas that I feel that could be pushed. I feel that um, I feel my daughter and other children in the class with a little bit of pushing would be naturally better a natural progression i almost feel in some ways like they're being held back now then i say my daughter's usual uh swimming teacher because for whatever reason for one reason or another the way these things go my daughter's usual swimming teacher isn't always there And whilst I've been doing the swimming lessons with my daughter, she has had three different teachers. In that time, those three different teachers are a regular one, uh, another woman that uh, has done 30-40% of the lessons, and one week we had a completely different woman. Now here's the problem. The problem is the, the lady that's done... 30-40% 30-40% of the lessons that I've gone to I really like her because any guesses you got it because she pushes the kids she also gets in the pool that doesn't necessarily need to be a big thing she does get in the pool and she pushes them you feel like the entire lesson is towards advancement I love it. If I'm honest, 
I do wish that she was my daughter's regular teacher for swimming and may or may not have looked into whether she does lessons that my daughter could go to. Anyway, this isn't even the story. This is just... This is the setup, so you understand. So, hmm. last week, swimming lesson. Now, first things first, there are two pools. There's the quote-unquote baby pool and there's the quote-unquote big pool. As we all know, anybody who's ever been to swimming of any variety, the baby pool is warm and the big pool is cold. And yes, coming back to what I was saying before about me and temperature, I never seem to find these things warm or cold. I just seem to find them just just get in and get on sort of temperature. Anyway, for the first time last week, the lesson was going to be in the big pool. Now, I don't know why. I don't know what the reason was for this for this was. I don't know if there was an issue with the small pool or what. One of the big things about the place that my daughter goes for swimming is when swimming lessons are on, it's generally at times when the when the pools aren't in use. So they have these blocks of swimming lessons and you can't go swimming at that time. And there have been points in time where there have been issues with people trying to get in the pool before like the the, the lesson time has ended. And and that's that. But nobody's getting in the little pool anyway. Lesson finishes, you get out, you go, and and people get in the big pool to swim, to do actual swimming. So the lessons in the big pool and it was really good and it went really well and at the end parents were thanking the teacher and telling her that it was a great lesson i agreed 10 minutes before the end of the lesson um, a lady appeared on the side of the pool she was dressed in a swimming costume she was um, of an age, and that age is older than me. Let's just go with that, so I don't offend anybody. So, she appeared 10 minutes before the pools were essentially open to the public, and proceeded to walk around the edge of the pool, and then ended up talking to what well, at this point was two lifeguards that that was that that was that was that that was the information as time ticks on what generally happens is by when you've got sort of like anywhere between five and the last few minutes of a lesson people will start appearing on the side of the pool up to the point where the lesson ends, like I say, if you're in the little pool and the lesson ends and people get in the big pool, it 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 has no relevance. You're getting out, they're getting in. It's two different pools, no issues. So we get to sort of three minutes before the end of the lesson, another person appears. Two minutes before the end of the lesson, another person appears. So let's say the Let's say the lesson ends at o'clock. Let's say the big the, the big hand and the little hand are on uh, are at the top, or what well, you know. If it was one o'clock, big, the big hand is at the top. So the lesson ends. There we go, people. The lesson's over. Uh, lovely to see you. See you next week. So, everybody's, you know, oh yeah, that's great, thank you. This wasn't quite the point in time, that you know, it wasn't quite the end, we were just like, okay, there you go, you know. There's a difference between, oh, we're getting to the end of the lesson, the kids are jumping in, because, you know, end of a swimming lesson, kids get to jump in, and everybody's getting out of the pool. There is a, there is a difference in time there. So, we've got the jumping in. Um, we've only got like a certain space 
and it, it, <laughs> I'll skip to the end so before the lesson ended and before anybody anybody had got out of the pool the lady who was the first to appear 10 minutes before she was able to get into the pool gets into the pool which is fine that's okay apart from she didn't get into the pool down the other end she didn't get into the pool in any of the lanes that are set out for lane swimmers she didn't get into the pool halfway down she got into the pool what was essentially in the lesson didn't wait didn't didn't say you know didn't say excuse me didn't try to maneuver in any way shape or form just for want of a better way of putting it barged into a swimming lesson <laughs> me and the teacher looked at each other the teacher was like what the actual hang on a minute there are children here i can't say the next word and i'm looking at her like is this actually happening is this real is this happening right now we're both looking at each other absolutely dumbfounded and i just went some people i guess what was the mentality behind this what was the thought process Oh, it's whatever time this lesson should be over by now. I will just get in the pool and make a point. Sorry, that's not the case because whatever time it was, the lesson wasn't over. Who does that? Who does something like that? It, it, it's one of the more baffling things that i've ever seen because and let's face it this is the real issue where she chose to get into the pool was where my daughter was trying to do her last jump in she barges past her who's on the side which let's face it small children side of a swim side of a wet swimming pool where they've been getting in and out in and out in and out that sounds super safe doesn't it gets into the pool barging past me and goes about her day who would do something like that it's it's a level of entitlement above any anything above anything that you could possibly comprehend and do you know something? I imagine that that evening, that lunchtime, whenever, that woman will have been telling a completely different version of this story. A version of, and the lesson didn't even finish on time. So do you know what? I just got in the pool in the middle of the lesson. I just got in. I barged past this little kid. I barged past her dad. And I just got in the pool. Because that's my right. That's what I imagined. I had my last time in the gym. It was an emotional time. Somewhat. Not emotional. But you know what I mean. <sighs> had my last time in the gym um if i'm honest the second last day at the gym i was like get me the flip out of here have you noticed i'm trying to curb my swearing how's it working um the second last day i went i was like oh my god this is awful i'm so glad i'm not coming to the gym anymore 
Um, on the last day, typically the last day was one of those kind of like a half middle finger because it went along the lines of there wasn't many people there. And I was like, uh, I managed to get everything done. It's not always terrible. That sort of thing. But that's that. I am, I am no longer a member of the gym. I uh, did my first home workout. I was going to say the first home workout in the in the home gym. That's not true. I have done a home workout. There was a day that the gym was closed. Uh, Queen's funeral, I think. Um, I had to work out at home. <sighs> not going to lie, and this pain, and it pains me to say this. Everything was fine working out at home. I was like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. A couple of the things that I don't like to do at home that I have to do at home. Um, decline, decline bench press where you just prop the bench on something. Not great. Um, there's a couple of machines I'm I'm already missing. And we're at day one. I need to I need to speak to my brother in law about some alternate uh, workout. Um, it's a little cramped. Uh, and I, I need to go back and I need to look at it again and try and try and utilize the space better. Uh, I do think there's probably going to be a change um, of bench set up in my future. Um, how I don't know. Might have to ask Father Christmas for that. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I feel. I know this stuff I can't do. I've already, I've already looked ahead at uh, tomorrow's workout, which is legs, and had that sudden realization that about forty percent of my leg workout was machine based. Uh, so I'm going to have to go back and look at some older uh, leg workouts with what I was doing at home and see if I can just um, just do those. Um, part of me wonders whether I might look at. Uh, rejoining a gym further down the line if I if I am finding that I'm not getting the results that I'm looking for um, but yeah in a weird way I'm a bit like uh, I kind of got in the swing of things getting back in the gym um, and I suppose it forces you out of your comfort zone somewhat but yeah I had a bit of a situation over the weekend we were trying to book uh, my eldest's birthday party, <sighs> which is which is a joy. Um, I sent out party invitations, and on them I said uh, RSVP by last Friday. Uh, a multitude of reasons for this. One. Um, I was just giving people a week because I'm like, you know whether you're coming or not, so let me know. Two, needed to book it. Three, really needed to book it because of when it's going to be and it's going to be at a busy time, so I wanted to book it nice and early to make sure it was booked. Job done. Simples. And, you know, you like to know where you are on this idea. So, uh, halfway through the week I get, I get an RSVP. Um, this child would love to come. I like perfect job done. Take him off the list. So Friday rolls around, and uh, and no response from all parties. I'm like, RSVP is is a two way thing. If you can come, let me know. If you can't come, let me know. So on Saturday, I said to my eldest, Hey, I haven't heard anything from this parent, this child's parent. Oh, no, uh, it's because they're busy that day. Now, uh, obviously, I'll refer you back to... What I said about RSVP work in two ways. You let me know whether you're coming or not. 
So but then I'm in this position, and I, I kept saying about this, I was like, I don't feel like this is on, because I then had to chase this parent on this whole situation. And I had to go to them and say, oh, I hear that your child is unavailable on this day. I get a response back. No, it wasn't just that. I didn't just say that. I was like, look, you know, what if we do it on a different day? We can move things around. We're flexible. Does that help? I get a message back and it's like, yeah, yeah, that, my, my, my child's not available on that day. Okay. Didn't want to let me know on that one? No? Cool. It... Proper irked me for days. Like, as you can probably tell talking about it now, I'm still like, that's not how the RSVP works. You let me know. Because here's the thing, if they'd let me know a week ago that they couldn't have made it, I'd have had a week to try and rearrange it to make sure that everybody was available and able to go. I lost a week on this. Honestly. Had, um, uh, I'm just looking at, at my list. You know how I like a list. I'm just looking at my list here. And the last thing to talk about is what I've written down as the night of hell. Both of my younger children, my youngest daughter and my son, are both super poorly like super poorly I was changing my son's nappy today and he had his mouth open and I said to him what is the point of you growing teeth at three months old when he's like mouth open and all I can see is these teeth poking through. I'm like, what do you need them for? So he's got like a whole teething slash the the mo most monster of monster colds ever slash something else going on. My, my youngest daughter, the germ factory that she is, I, I think her entire existence is just collecting germs cultivating those germs in the in the uh, previously mentioned swimming pool and then just carrying them around with her there is never a point in time she doesn't have a cold now my middle daughter was exactly the same for ages and i think it's probably just a thing that if you're a certain child or that's a certain way you are just susceptible to the, to the, all the germs uh, my youngest daughter is more than susceptible. She had COVID like a, a bajillion times. Um, so what, what's fun is she goes out into the world, collects up some germs, brings them home, then, you know, goes swimming and, and really pumps them up, makes them into super germs, and then brings them home and tries to infect everybody. Uh, unfortunately for my son, he got what has been the most monster of colds ever. And like I say, adding the teeth in and all of that. So there was a night last week where my son's like, do you know what? Two o'clock in the morning is the new seven o'clock in the morning, so let's do this. And he was awake, screaming from two o'clock in the morning it, it it didn't stop it wouldn't stop it couldn't stop it just carried on what made that situation even better was at five o'clock in the morning my youngest daughter went ah, it sounds like you guys are having loads of fun in there Maybe I should get in on the mix. So she decided it was time to get up. And that she was 
unwell and and it, and it was just this what what is happening here um yeah at like uh, 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 about six o'clock i was like i am that awake right now that i might just go for a run i might just go and do my run now I didn't, but not through my own fault. I was absolutely going to get up at half six and go for a run. And then Land's like, right, I'm off in the shower. Like, All right, cool. See ya. Um, that's that's the week. The week, in a nutshell. Um, I've been watching stuff and I've been playing games. Let's talk about it. Um, finally finished the, uh, the Mike Tyson TV series. Mike. Uh, I watched. I watched five episodes. Does anybody remember a few a few weeks ago? I said that I tried to watch an episode and it was so incredibly out of sync that it was unwatchable. Um, I never went back to it after that, uh, for one reason or another. Uh, but I was going back to it, and I said to you guys at the time, I was like, "I'm definitely going back to it. Don't you worry." And I did. Um, it's a great series. It's super watchable. One of those, one of those sort of series that you get. They're few and far between these days, but you every now and then get a series where you put an episode on, and what seems like two minutes later, the credits are rolling, and you're like, "Whoa, that episode just evaporated." It does make it super super watchable. So you, I, I think I watched, I think I watched two episodes, and then I think I watched three episodes. Um. Unfortunately for me, um, the stuff that I started watching was starting to get into when things were going bad for Mike Tyson. Um, and that's always going to be difficult to watch or, 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 or sort of be aware of or any sort of thing. Um, there, there's a, there was a bit, spoilers by the way, there is a bit in it where um, you see him being offered cocaine for the first time and you're like, because uh, obviously if you know anything about Mike Tyson that is like a huge downfall um, like the like his boxing career as you would expect his boxing career went downhill and, and it was just this, this downhill stuff now then although I really enjoyed the series I really enjoyed the episodes tough to watch at times I really enjoyed it there's one issue I've got. There's a few issues I've got. There's one issue I've got. And the one issue I've got is... It's... It, the, the show starts um, when he walks out on stage to do his one-man show. But he was doing his one-man show ten years ago. And the last episode ends when he walks off stage at the end of the one-man show. Again, that was ten years ago. Personally, I feel that there's been a lot of interesting stuff that's happened with Mike Tyson in the last 10 years. Uh, literally, was watching an episode of How I Met Your Mother the other day. Mike Tyson was in it. Obviously, there was the whole thing with him appearing in The Hangover, and that kind of brought him back into the limelight. There's how... He's gone on to be very successful in other areas, shall we say. Um, and I, I just think that, that, that they've left quite a lot of meat on the bone. Leanne asked me if I thought there would be a second series. I was like, no, because there's not enough there to make a second series. They should have just had another episode or another couple of episodes to really bring it up up to date because i think that there is some interesting stuff that's happened in the last 10 years um it's on disney plus i know not everybody has disney plus um i know for a fact we couldn't live with it without it in our house silly statement to make because obviously you could but um there's a lot of stuff on there that that we watch in our house um so if you've got it you have any interest in Mike Tyson's life up to 10 years ago, give it a little whirl. 
Speaking of Disney Plus, good friend of mine sent me a thing the other day. And he said, hey, have you seen what's on Disney Plus? And what he sent me was a picture of the screen of Disney Plus, And it was a picture that I kind of recognised. But it was weird because it was something animated. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Disney are known for animated stuff. Yes, but this was anime. So there was this episode of Bleach on there. Um, anybody that knows anime will almost definitely know Bleach. Anybody that doesn't might still know of Bleach. It's um, a little popular. Uh, one of the things that I will say at this point in time is few people know this, but somewhere hidden on my body may or may not be a Bleach tattoo. Um turned out when i looked into it more it was like a new series there was just one episode but i was so baffled by the fact that there was anime on disney still have absolutely no idea how it's come about but having a conversation with the person that sent it to me um we were talking about like the original series of bleach and it um, and the person I was talking to was saying that they think that the original series of Bleach was cancelled which I find interesting uh, still haven't got around to looking it up um, so I, I don't know if it's true it's just what I was told don't don't shoot the messenger um, so as a man that does enjoy a spot of anime every now and then there was a point in time where I was like do you know what I'm going to give that a watch. Put it on, I watched it, and do you know something? Um, originally, when I, I, I watched Bleach the first time, I got so far into it, and it, there was just this twist in the story, and I hated it so much, I stopped watching it. And then, a couple of years later, I was like, do you know something? I, pr- I was probably a little unfair. Let me try and watch it again. So... I tried again, I got to the same place and went, no, I'm out. And that was kind of it for me. And I never I never went any further past that point. Um, obviously there are the um the manga, like the books that I could have read, but I just I was just too annoyed with it all. Um I watched this episode of Bleach, the, this new series, and it was very good, it was very enjoyable. I was worried that I might have missed stuff um and obviously there is stuff that i have missed but it was i wasn't watching it like oh my god who are these people and oh my god what's going on and, uh, uh what's happening with this person it was like yeah this seems like a place i can pick this up from um anime fans if you're out there and you're listening maybe give it a whirl see what you think uh Movies. I haven't watched anything movie-wise apart from me and my elder sat down to watch, um, uh, and I know what you're going to say. We sat down to watch Batman versus Superman. Now then, before we all get very you know hot and bothered about this, let me break this down. I may or may not have become aware of the after credit scene of Black Adam. Just going to leave that there. I'm not saying anything. However, there is this possibility that me and my eldest are going to go and um, going to go and watch Black Adam. Maybe we'll go and watch it the cinema. And then I had a sudden realization that although my eldest has seen Man of Steel. She hasn't seen any of the other DC movies. So, I haven't seen Batman vs. Superman, as we can all appreciate. You can see the reasons why. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman 2, which, oh my god, is is there a worse film? Uh, Justice League. Uh, I still feel that she's probably still maybe too young to watch the Schneider Cut 
um, even though, as we all know, the Schneider Cut is the better of the two Justice Leagues. However, weirdly, I do feel that the um, the Whedon version of Justice League is very much something that she could watch. And then I went, ah, crap. Because there's not enough time between now and the possible point in time when we're going to go and see Black Adam for her to watch all those films. Shit. So then I was like, hey, by the way, you probably need to watch like five movies really quickly. So that is why we sat down to watch Batman vs. Superman. And as a child, she enjoyed it. I asked her a couple of times, like, what do you think of that film? She was like, yeah, it was good. <sighs> Every time I watch that film, I see something different. And I see both sides. I always see something where I go, do you know something? That's better than I thought it was. And I always see something where I go, and that's worse than I thought it was. It's such an enigma of a film. Obviously, it was widely panned by pretty much everybody. So, I'm going to go through the, the, the two things that I can name, maybe three, that I found to be different. Something that I found different in the positive is... Once you get so far in that film, it's pretty much all go. It's pretty much all action. Once you get to sort of the back half of it, it's all action. Admittedly, there is a lot of talking up till that point, a lot less superheroing. Um, a negative. This is spoilers. A negative. Batman fighting Superman makes absolutely no sense. And I don't mean because Superman's Superman and Batman's Batman. I get that much. What I mean is, there is a point where Superman's like, hey, we shouldn't fight, let's have a chat. Batman's like, no, no, we need to fight, so here, have this, and uses a, a thing on him. I'll try and keep it vague. And Superman's like, hey... We, we don't need to fight. We need to join forces. We need to work together. Let's not fight. Batman's like, no, we do need to fight. Here, have some more of this. And then Superman goes, okay, let's fight. It makes no sense. And it's one of those things, I, I could go into this for a long time, and I did... When I was talking to my daughter about it, I was like, look, this is why this bit makes absolutely no sense. Um, one other thing, I don't care how you slice it. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care about any of it. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor it will never be okay. will never be acceptable. <sighs> Talk about it didn't work. <sighs> computer games. Let's talk some computer games. Um, I'm in a weird place with games at the moment. I have a horrible feeling that because I'm so, like, I'm just in this weird place, that I'm going to, out of sheer craziness, I'm going to buy a new game. There are two games coming out in the next few weeks. I think one comes out a week today, and then one comes out next month. And I have a horrible feeling that even though they're 50 and £55 respectively, I'm probably going to find some way to buy them. Which is silly, because I, I don't do that anymore. Anyway, let's talk about the games that I am playing. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Shadow Warrior 3. Shadow Warrior 3, it really had me. Um, however, it reached a point where... I'm definitely towards the back end of the game now. It reached a point where it's weird what, uh, what, what Sam would call janky mechanics and controls and things actually started becoming a detriment to the game. And I ended up in a position where I reached a point where I couldn't progress because 
of the mechanics of the game. I'm not a very good game player. So that doesn't go too well with really weird mechanics. And I just got stuck. And I rage quit. And then I tried again a day later. And I rage quit. And then I tried again a day later. And I rage quit. And then I tried it again a couple of days later. What's interesting though is about three days after that. I tried again. And I managed to do it. Possibly first time. So I actually continued playing it. Um, haven't actually finished it yet. I think it's largely to do with the fact that I've got other stuff that I'm playing. Um, because I've progressed, I will stick with it. Uh, there was a point where I did think I was going to have to let it go, and it annoyed me. It really wound me up. Speaking of other things I'm playing, uh, The Division 2, still playing. Not a lot to say about it other than I'm, I'm still enjoying it. I'm still enjoying playing it. Sometimes I don't want to play it. Um, but that is just a... Sometimes I want to play something else. Um, something. I was about to start doing something. And then I was like, hey, I could talk about it. Ooh, the notifications. Uh, I don't need any of those notifications. So this has been super cool. Uh, let me see if I can do it now. Uh, no. Uh, search for a game. Okay, let's search for this. Uh, it says it's there. Let's do this. Ah, right. Yes, I can do it. So, I've got the PlayStation app on my phone. Every now and then I'll be sitting around like, ooh, I fancy playing X. I fancy playing Y. I fancy playing that game. And if I own it, what I can do is I can go onto the app and tell the app to download the game. Now, I'm not a person that leaves my PlayStation in rest mode, but if I did, and I did it through the app, it would download to the console and be there ready and waiting. As it is, and like what I've just done there, I've been thinking about a game for a few days, and I fancy playing it. Weirdly, a lot of the games that I've been playing recently align to games that are coming out. Me being me, I do like to uh, to refresh myself on a on a on a game when there's a sequel coming out. If it's a game I enjoyed previously. Speaking of, the other game I'm playing is uh, is God of War. I am playing a PS4 version of God of War on the PS5. Um, and what I will say is this, no matter how beautiful that game was, it's really starting to show its age. Playing on the PS5, it's highlighting a lot of areas where that game doesn't quite look as nice as it probably once did. It's weird because it's really obvious. It's like, oh, that doesn't look as good as I remember it. got to remember memory's HD. Something that I always wonder about when I'm playing the the God of War. It's not the God of War. When I'm playing God of War. Is I wonder whether I am Kratos. Not in that sense. I wonder, I wonder whether like sometimes my, um, my parenting style is a little bit too Kratos. If, uh, if you know what I mean. But then other times I wonder if I was raised... By Kratos. Obviously those two things go hand in hand. But sometimes. And I've said this before. Sometimes these aspects make playing God of War. A difficult game to play. Sometimes you're playing it. And like he'll do something. And you're just like. Oh God. That's. that. Sometimes I'm a little bit like that. And other times. You'll play it. And he'll do something. And you're like. Yeah. I remember that one well. Makes for difficult computer game playing people. Anyway, there we go. I might have had too much coffee because this is an absolute bumper episode of the podcast. Um, so, you know, enjoy. Or, or maybe don't. We shall see. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time. So there you go. What do you think of that? A bumper edition of the Darkest Timeline podcast. Before you go, 
do consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. Drop us reviews. Check out our website, thecookiecast.com. Over there, we've got uh, social media links and an email button. Hey, here's something. Have you been enjoying the uh, the extra outros? Have you heard the extra outros? Hmm? Have you? Have you? Have you? If you would like to be in with a chance to record or even have us record you doing an outro, drop us a line. It's that simple. Drop us an email, say, hey, I want to do an outro for the podcast, and we will sort it out. That's it for this one. Until next time, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to this episode of Cookie Cast.